Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today for another video on in our stencil making series. Uh, I think this might be video number five or six. I'm not sure now I've lost track, but I am so excited to share this one with you. I have been chomping at the bit to get to this point because today I'm going to share kind of my secret weapon, I think it is. I don't know if anybody else has done this. I have not seen it before. It's going to involve text. And when you search for text stencils, this is the kind of thing that you get. So I don't know if I'm sharing a magician's secret or anything like that, that I'm not supposed to, but this is just kind of something that popped up really kind of from um, my childhood in elementary school class. And I don't think it was even an art class, but we used to get to do art in our, even in some of your regular classes. And so I think it was something that has just always stuck in my mind. So I'm going to share that, but there's a few things that I want to share about text stencils before that, um, before I go into uh, my little secret weapon. So if you're just joining me for the very first time, I want to say welcome. And uh, if you want to watch this series, I recommend starting at the very beginning because I cover a lot of really super basic things if you've never made stencils before. I have been doing the first part of the videos with handmade stencils in case you don't have any type of cutting machine. This video, I'm not going to do that because there's so much that I want to cover and I don't have anything prepared for handmade stencils today. So I'm going to be using um, Cricut Design Space still and my Cricut Maker to make the stencils that I'm going to show you today. And I have had lots of comments, so I appreciate it. To Thank you to everybody who's been commenting. And I have had comments from people who have other types of cutting machines like a Cameo or a Silhouette. And I don't have experience with any other type of software or cutting machines, but they say that th these videos are really translating for what they have access to. So that was great news to me because I was really hoping that this would just really kind of be inspiration and ideas. And then you can use whatever software that you have available to you. And I'm actually going to be introducing some other software later on in the series. But I'm still working with just Cricut Design Space Basic Shapes. And today we're going to add a little bit more to that. And then again, the Cricut Maker to cut. So I had shown at the very beginning introduction some of the stencils that I had made over the last couple of months. I've only been doing this for a couple of months. So I'm not an expert. I would say I'm self-taught, but it's kind of self-taught by just exploring the, the software and things that I have. And then not really stencil making videos, but more uh, watching videos like later on when I'm going to be using Procreate. I just got Procreate. So I needed some just, you know, favorite tips to get going kind of thing. So really, otherwise, this is all just me kind of playing around with the equipment and things that I have. So obviously, stencils, when it comes to letters and text, you think of just these alphabet stencils. And you can buy a lot of these on the market, but you know, we want to make our own. And some of the the stencils that I'm showing, because I have purchased the Access subscription on Cricut, there are several letter stencils text stencils that are already stencils. So they already have the extra little cuts that you need uh, so that, you know, the holes don't fall out of the O's, for example. So I am going to show you how to do that with any text so that you can do that even if you don't have the uh, design access on your Cricut. Uh, there, I think, is only one stencil that is totally free if you don't have the subscription that is already formatted as a stencil. So I'll show you that when we get over to the computer. But I just kind of wanted to give you a little taste of what we're going to look at today. These were stencils that I made because I have that access and there are several different fonts that had that were already stencils. All of these were done with stencil fonts. I didn't have to customize them to make them become stencils. And you can play around with size and scale and all that sort of thing and really make them personal, which is kind of what I did on this one. It just, you know, uh, numbers and letters and dates and things that meant something to me. And then I had made this for my son's getting married. Everyone knows who's been watching um, here shortly. And so I've been deep into wedding planning and I had made the stencil uh, and it took me a few times and I want, I, I keep these in here as a reminder you know, if letters and text that you find that you want to use for stencils 
are too skinny. I mean, it's okay if that's what you want, but just to be aware that sometimes, you know, larger, uh, thicker texts are better for uh, stencils. It's kind of fun to have the variety when you want to kind of do a collage stencil like this. Um, but even then, as I was playing around, they took a lot longer than you think to just get everything arranged so that you didn't have too much um, positive and negative space that it really felt filled up. Um, this obviously is just simple X's and O's, but it makes a nice repeating pattern. And then we're gonna get into my secret weapon, which is using text to create other completely different designs that you don't even recognize that you used a letter for. And that has been a game changer. The, these were done with text. These were done with text. These are actually the same as this page, just at a different scale all done with letters from fonts. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. The other thing that I wanted to talk about today, uh, for me, it's kind of maybe an odd combination for everyone else, but to me, it kind of plays into getting into working with other things like text and even with shapes. But because we were working on really basics, I haven't really talked about this too much, but I wanted to talk about the difference between stencils and masks, um, because you hear both terms, and again, I'm self-taught, so if someone wants to correct me for my terminology, but this is how I interpret them differently, and I wanted to kind of share that because I'm going to show it also in text. So to me, a stencil is if you take a piece of material, whatever you're making your stencil out, in my case, this is plastic, the part, if your shape, your design is cut out and you're putting your paint or ink or whatever you're using is going through a empty space, that to me is a stencil. So it's, you have this, your base, and then your design is cut out of that. And then whatever you put through that is a stencil. So, I, I did these as an example. This is the most basic stencil that you, you know, to me that you can do is circles. But I did some with larger, I think these might be like two inch circles. Um, and I really like that because it's great for when you want to layer stencils and you can see how I have things that you see through the circle. So later on when I get into some gel printing tutorials, I'll kind of show you how I use them differently. But this to me is a stencil. And then a mask is just the reverse of that. So when I cut this out, obviously I end up with a bunch of circles because they were just punched out and they're not connected to each other. So these would be considered masks. So you can lay these onto your gel plate randomly, however you want, and use these as masks. So I have actually saved some of my larger shapes that are kind of interesting. I know you can't see that because it's on a white background here, um, but it's just kind of a little crossy kind of shape there. I think you can see that. So anything large like that, I save those because maybe I want to use those as masks. And then to me, sometimes I interchange the word because I am just not thinking of it maybe as, let me find my actual mask. If it, if to me, you hold it like a stencil, these are all the same. This is a mask. It's, I call it a stencil sometimes because there are voids that you put paint through. But to me, this is like a solid mask. So instead of each individual little circle being a mask, and you might have a design, maybe it's a silhouette of a person or a bird or a heart that you're laying down, you're masking something off. So maybe you already have some paint down or a design and you want to put a big heart shaped so that that doesn't get any more paint on it, but you're going to continue and do paint around the other parts. That would be a mask. So to me, this is a mask also because it's, a, it's these larger circles. But in order to make a mask, to cut a mask, things need to be connected because otherwise I would just be punching the holes out of my plastic just like this. So I want to be able to remove my entire design that is all made out of plastic and really this is my negative space. This is really my design. So that to me is kind of an obvious difference between a stencil and a mask. 
um, and and you can use them in similar ways. I ended up, I could have maybe butted these circles up closer together and had less, but I wanted to make it really obvious. So I, in order to make a mask out of the same pattern of circles, I just had to connect them all to each other with a rectangle. So that is just kind of a super simple explanation. And then these are just some prints. So this one I kept really high contrast so you'd really be able to see. But see, you can you can layer stencils in both the positive and negative space and just get a, a lot of nice texture. So that's one. This is also with the same mask and it's really subtle. You can't see it very well, but when I get it in the light, right, you see all those circles um, and with the metallics. And I think I actually used black to do that, but I had so, so little on there and then just some other metallics going. But it's just, this is kind of a nice example of how you can have the layer those patterns, but have them be really kind of subtle and really blend into each other. And then again, this one I tried to do with a lot of contrast so you'd really be able to see it. But this was again, laying down a, another stencil and then putting paint down in a couple of layers and then um, putting the mask down and then the final layers. So it's just kind of a fun different way to layer your stencils. So um, then you can kind of do a hybrid thing, which this is sort of like a mask and a stencil um, in that I took my same circle mask circles that were connected, but instead of uh, having them be the solid of a space, I wanted it to be more like a stencil. So I, you know, cut those out also. And it makes a really nice pattern too. So I don't know if you'd call this, um, it's kind of a hybrid to me. It's kind of a mask and a stencil. So this is, are some of the, the prints from those. So just kind of fun, different, larger patterns to play around with. And then to get into the text part, I still did one that is with masks and stencils that you can do with words. And I'll show you kind of how, how I did this. So again, your plastic and these, this was a text that was not a stencil. And so I've made it a stencil and I'll show you how to do that. So you can really take any kind of font that you have and turn it into your own stencil. Some work better than others. And when we get over to the computer, I'll kind of show you what you might want to look for, um, but I really love that font for uh, the stencils. So I've done these up top here, you know, lay, laying down a color of paint. In this case, it was uh, kind of this indigo color and then laying down, um, or no, laying down gold first and then the stencil and then the indigo color through. And I laid down, I laid all these down at the same time. So these are would be masks because the whole word is actually the plastic instead of the word being cut out of the plastic. So stencil and a mask. So at least that's how I'm, I'm identifying them for myself. So if I'm wrong, you can let me know. But same thing, I had put the goal down, laid these pieces down and laid these down. So these were masking and, and protecting the gold. And then I laid down the indigo color and then a silver over the top of everything to pull it up. So just, you know, different ways to use those. And then the fun, fun, fun part. Okay, so this is my my most favorite so far anyway, way to make stencils, patterns that even once I've finished it, if I don't put what I did in the title, I will not recognize what letter I used to do this. So. This one was actually an, an S. I used an S of a font to make this one. So this is in two different, this is turning out to be probably my most favorite stencil right now, I think. I just love how it turned out. Um, and it really has a nice balance of positive and negative space. So I really, I really love this one. Um, so that was done with an S. This one was done with a T. So, and even with just this one letter, I have actually, I think it was this one, I actually have several different stencils that look completely different, even though they were with the same letter of the same font. So I'll show you kind of uh, ways to do that. Sort of like uh, when I was distorting things uh, before, 
making uh, the very early on, I think it was before the series even, making my stencils a different size made them just maybe taller one direction. It makes them look totally different. So this is that stencil, a much finer pattern. But I really love how that turned out too. And then this one, so these three, uh, I did vary my, well, this, these are really similar, but the size of the positive negative space. And this one is, is much larger. And I wanted to show this because as you're looking for letters to use for this type of idea, you really want to pay attention to how thin or thick the letters are because the way we're going to do it you don't really have you have control over the size but if a letter is really thin in a spot or thick in a spot you really can't change that it's only going to scale up or down so this was with also with a t and I, I really like how that turned out too it's just a nice big a bigger scaled pattern so these are uh, just kind of the teaser and now we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you how to do this okay so here we are in our Cricut design space and I'm starting out in my stuff because I wanted to show you um, just a couple of examples before we get into deep here so the the last stencil that I showed you was this vintage tea and what I've been doing just as a tip you can name it anything you want and when you do save your files, you can put a description. When I'm making um, something, I don't even remember by the time I'm finished what my font is or what letter I used. And so I've been using the name of the font, what letter I used, and then a number because I have been making multiples just for play using exactly the same letter, but changing it in a completely different way so that it doesn't even look like it's from the same letter. So I wanted to point that out so that you see that just because you've made one stencil with a letter that you can do all sorts of things. Uh, in fact, this one, this is the one that I showed. Um, let me pull it up bigger so you can see it. When I originally did this one, this little cutout diamond, there was a diamond and it was from stacking my letters on top of each other, but that little cutout diamond ended up being really tiny. And rather than patch it, I, I wanted, instead of this much solid space, I wanted the diamond there, but I wanted it larger. So I went ahead and created another similar diamond and then just used my subtract option to make the, that hole bigger. And we've learned how to do that in previous videos, but I wanted to show you that even when you have uh, something and want more void space or another hole or something like that, you can do that. This is exactly the same letter, just totally arranged and stretched in a different way. And it has this kind of wavy effect. I haven't cut this one yet because same thing, I want to, I need to make this little diamond bigger or turn it into something else because I don't want that skinny of a space. But you can see it's the same one, it's just distorted in a different way. And then this is actually also the same one and it's just laid out in a totally different way. And then where the letter was really thick, I actually added in these rectangles cutouts and I did the same thing with these circles. So it's the same letter. I just added more holes so that it would have more, be more fine of a stencil, more uh, delicate of a stencil than this bold one. So that's just three different stencils from the same exact letter. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're doing these that you don't have to just stop at one design. Okay, so let's go to a new project and what's going to happen we're going to use the text here and let's just pull that up if you haven't done anything with text when you when you pull up text you get an, another toolbar under here and we're going to use this so i wanted to point this out it goes away if you're doing another shape see if i'm if i'm clicked off so i don't have this selected that toolbar goes away so it only pops up when you're selected the other thing it does is if you look over here, and sometimes it's a little annoying, but this toolbar, you see the zero you can't see. So like if I put this text all the way up, it cuts off the top part of my design. So when I'm working with text, I tend to just kind of 
get my design worked out down here and then once I start building my stencil then I'll put it up in the corner so that's just something else to keep in mind let's make this a little bigger so we can really see it now the first thing you see here is font so if you click on this little down arrow it's going to pull up this font menu and you can move this around if it's in your way you can put it wherever you want it, it automatically defaults at Cricut fonts so there's 945 fonts you can search by category or style or a name if you know the name of it and then it will you know not make you have to go through all 945 these are topics here you know these are new fonts and uh, all that sort of thing and it, it, there's a little arrow over here so you can kind of go back and forth uh, but that's just some different topics and those change you know I, I've I've noticed there'll be certain ones and then next time I go look and my options are different so that's just one way to kind of search again you can type in what you want here you can change the language um, these uh, of these um, so see calligraphic ones it, it only has eight that it considers that so you'll notice that all of these have a green a and those are all through the subscription there aren't very many free fonts now when i type free up here i have to get rid of that that filter and it has 390 that are free but that's because i have the subscription so all these green would if you don't have the subscription those would cost you something this one here is free so in my list it includes all the free ones uh, with my subscription or without and then it shows other ones here but these have dollar amount on those too so i don't know why those popped up but anyway you can kind of scroll through and see what's available to you that's free um, if you don't have the subscription your other option it is let's get rid of that is if you look over here in system this brought up 267 fonts that are on my computer so it brought up all of my favorite fonts that from my word processing program or any fonts that i have purchased and uploaded to my computer those are all here also and that was really handy for me because i'm familiar with some of them and some of them are perfect for stencils so you can you know kind of look through and then over here i've bookmarked you know the ones that i've either used before or want to use you know while i'm going through here and then i don't have to find them again so you can bookmark things whether they're your own from system or from cricut and then they would show up here when you click on bookmark I have 24 bookmarked so I, I just can find my favorites here so you're not going to have as as unless you do the subscription or if you have fonts already on your computer that you can access so go look in system that might be where your best bet is until you you know figure out if you want the other things or not the other thing that you can do is you can upload your own thing so I have actually done that and let me see if I can find it here if I click on upload this letter here is uploaded and I also did the whole word thank you and I think I did this before I figured out that that system was my other fonts that were available to me but you can what you can do is you can go to your word processing program or whatever uh, wherever you have fonts if you have Photoshop or Adobe Illustrated or something like that anything that has text that you can type the letter that you want or a word or the whole alphabet and then take a screenshot of it like we did in the last video and then upload it here and then remove the background and all that so then you have your shape so this M I've used but I got it elsewhere and then uploaded it so you do have to keep in mind uh, that when you upload you can only upload these formats here and if you work on a word processor font say you're just going to type you know like you're typing a document and you want to use that well i'm working on an apple and so my format that my word processing documents are saved in is pages which is not universal and it won't go i can't upload it to cricut so what I have to do is do the thing like we did where you take a screenshot of the letter or word that you want and then uh, that way it's saved as a photo uh, and then you can you know crop it to the size you want or whatever just like we did before and then you'll upload it from your desktop or wherever you've saved it so as long as you have it in a JPEG or a PNG or however if you can save it in a PD you know or P, this doesn't do PDFs but PNG or JPEG is your best bet and then you'll remove the background like we showed in the last video also and then you'll have it 
in your Cricut. So we'll cancel that. But that's how you can go and get some fonts or letters that you want. And you could do the word like I had done the thank you already. So you can you can prepare the word in your word processor and then upload the word already ready to go. Uh, just need to remove the background. So I don't know if you want me to go through that actual thing. If you do, let me know in the comments and I'll just do it in another video. But we went over it in the last one, so I'm just going to move on here. So if we want to turn anything into a stencil that's not already a stencil, there are a few text stencil that are already stencils. They already have that little slit in the text in Cricut but they most of those are subscription i think there was only one free one and it's too thin of a letter to use so you want to keep that in mind when you're looking for a font uh, if i click through here it will go ahead and and change whatever word i have here to the font that i'm considering and then that way i can decide if i want to use it or not so this is actually a good one for uh, some commentary this letter here this t if you were to try to, you can do it, but if you were to try to do this as a stencil, it's going to want to cut out each of these little pieces. And so that's kind of tedious to make those little slits that we're going to need to make uh, because those would otherwise just fall out. And then your whole cutout would be, you know, this whole thing. So there's a couple things you can do. I'm just pointing it out so that you can make a decision about which font to use based on you know looking at the letter and this one might be kind of busy to do what you could do is you could get rid of this part just eliminate it and then uh, you it looks like just this little part here you would have to make that little connector and I'm going to show you how to do that um, but that one's a little complicated uh, this one's pretty easy and these are already fine so all you need to do when you're looking is Anything that is not this the graph, because we're making a stencil, which means all the black part is going to get punched out. If there is any graph that you're seeing in the middle of any of the black letter part, that's also going to get punched out. It needs to be connected to this graph, which is your background. So we have to make a little con a little connector for that. So this one would not necessarily be the best word for that. But let's see if we type my name, for example. Oh, see, that one's also very busy. So all these fancy letters, all of these little spots you would have to cut out. So let's pick a different font because that's not the best one to use. Let's, this one's super easy. Okay, so let's make it a little smaller. And let's do, we need it to be blue for us to be able to retype. And then your cursor, you can move wherever so I can do thank you let's make it a little smaller see I'm gonna need to fix the O and the A for this one so what we're gonna do is the first thing you want to do is you want to detach these from each other uh, when it's only one or two letters, it's not the biggest deal. You can kind of do them at the same time. But if you have a lot of letters, or like say I have multiple A's, I can just fix one of the A's and then replace the other ones. Um, I'm trying to think of a, let's do welcome and then that will, sh uh, that will show this better. Welcome, because there's two E's. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go up here to advanced and click that and we want to ungroup the letters, ungroup two letters. And so what it did is it made each letter its own layer. So now these are not connected to each other. So one thing that you want to remember is don't move these around too much because sometimes this is not an issue here because I can just uh, select them all and align them to the bottom. But if you had, say, something where a G or something that went down, it would not let you do that. You would it be aligning kind of, you know, wonky. So just try not to move these while you're working on them and then we'll group them together later. So I'm gonna go to my E and I also want to do this E. So I'm going to grab a, a square and I'm going to change the color so you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Doesn't matter what color. And then I need to 
unlock it because I'm going to make it really small. So I try to make it relative to the size of the letter that I'm using. Like say there's a skinny part here. That's going to be my bridge to the to my background. So I've seen some videos where they'll just do this straight line through all your letters. And O's that looks okay, but I don't really like it on all my letters. So you kind of just find the best spot and this is hard to move because it's so small so see it it's just wants to change the size so that I can get my arrow so you want to find a good spot where you want that break I try to do them in a, a the least conspicuous kind of spot so I know this is small to see but I'm going to kind of make my I'm going to make this shorter 0.25 and then I'm just using my arrows and I'm trying to get it over as close to that edge as I can. I think I want it a little bit wider. So let's go 0 0.075, maybe even 8.5. That looks good. Okay, and then I want to select this E, which is the wrong E. Let's do this E. For some reason, when you have text, it doesn't always want you to select it at the letter. Um, and then my square. And then I'm going to go down to combine, subtract. And you see it made that little opening. So now that, that won't fall out. It's going to be connected to my background. And then instead of, I didn't get this really good. If I make this, let's see. Let's go, oops, I don't want to move that. Let's say select all so I can move this and you can see, make it bigger. There's a little bit of a sliver there you can see because this is curved and I wasn't working with a curved thing. So you can make another shape that's curved if you want to get it if you're really a perfectionist or just move it over a little bit so it looks intentional and then just make your notch there. So that would be the E and then so that I don't, let me hit select all again so I can get see my other E. This is just so that I'm moving everything together so it doesn't get out of line. I can now just go over here and delete this E and duplicate this E and then just put it back over here. That way I don't have to, you know, they'll look the same and I don't have to do it over. And then I'll, I can line those up again at the end. Uh, and then the O, you could actually, if you wanted to, do, you can do two little ones or you can do one long one that goes all the way through if you want it broken at the top and the bottom. And lock here. Make it skinny. Let's do again that 0 0.85 and I'm just typing it in up there at size. And then I'm just going to center it on my O. So because it's sing it's singular, I can grab those two things and align center. It moved my O up because I centered it. I should have just centered it horizontally. And then while I have those selected, hit combine, subtract. And now I have a stencil. So I can grab all of these select all and I can align them to the bottom and now they're all lined up again. So again that whole alignment thing you just have to remember if you have any letters that hang down below that won't work. The other thing you can do is while you have them all selected you go over here and you see where it says group or ungroup. You group those and then that way whenever you're moving them it's not that they're just selected they'll stay that way. They'll stay as a group. So even if I got out of it, it's kind of like attaching them. You're just grouping them back together. Okay, so that's just basic how to make any letter a stencil. Again, the fancier they are, the harder they are, and that kind of thing. But you'll get the hang of it. It's just, it's all the same process no matter what. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this. And then I'm going to go to something I've already started working on because this is the fun part and I'm going to customize and I'm going to replace my canvas 
Okay, so these two things, you can see over here by my layers, I've used exactly the same letter for both of these designs. So I was just playing around, and now I could, you know, duplicate this and keep building on it and attaching them to each other. And I, can't, I want them to attach to each other again because it's just like a letter. There is solid spots here, and those would get punched out and not be connected. It would punch out all the dark stuff. I want that to be my stencil, kind of like the stencil mask thing we were talking about. So I want all of the dark to be attached to each other like we did in all the other stencils, and then that way it's all one piece. So I would do that, you know, do the whole Unite thing like we did before, duplicate again, and make my pattern, okay? So, and I could do that with this one too. So I'm gonna go back though and show you the letter and we're just gonna create something else even different. So I think I'll get rid of these two for fun and I'm gonna hide, hide these two for now, just so they're not, in my view okay and we're going to go to text and that one was old alfie so i'm going to find that one okay here we go old alfie okay and the letter that i was using was an s so we're going to keep using that so that we can see all the different things or some of the different things we can do so i love these sort of ornate letters to use you don't have to use ornate ones. Also, show you some other fonts that I kind of like that are really interesting. But this is the one I was playing around with today. So grab one, and then I like to do them large again so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to just duplicate that. And kind of the first thing I do is I look at how can they connect the way they are. But usually the best thing is to flip something so that I've done a mirror, a mirror image of it. So I'm going to do this one horizontal. This is how I did that first. And then you just kind of find where they connect nicely together. You know, maybe I do it from this side. And that's kind of interesting. So I'm going to get these two and I'm going to align them to the bottom so they're even. And then I can just decide how far over I can inch it over and do something like that. I kind of liked it actually with that separation. So let's say, let's call it, let's see what this looks like. Here I'm kind of watching here. I just kind of want to watch where my overlaps are at a place that makes sense and I kind of like how that looks so I'm going to select all combine, unite, and I don't have any weird things going on. And then I would just take that and duplicate that, and then I'd flip it the other direction. Now I have these kind of big, so let's see. Let me make, let me get rid of that one, and let me make it smaller. So that we're in the screen. Duplicate flip vertical and then again you just kind of look to see where you might like to attach them to each other so I'm gonna make sure they're centered horizontally and then again you would just go up or down you know they need to be attached to each other so I'm looking at these corners here and here and that may or may not be enough to attach those. Let's try it and see. Select all, combine, unite, and let's take a look. Yep, that connected those. Now this left a little tiny weird little corner thing that it's gonna wanna cut, but this is where you can fix things like that if you want. You can grab a circle and maybe make it the same size as this little notched out circle. We're gonna guess that's maybe 0.25, no bigger, 0.5, 0.5. That's pretty close. So I could actually take, take something like this and add it there, and that just kind of makes more sense as a cutout. 
uh, and then I would duplicate that and move it over here and then let's say I want to grab these actually center vertically and that even them out and then I kind of want to make sure they're the same distance from each other that's a little harder to do but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it so I could do something like that now I need to attach those okay and now I'm going to make my design a little smaller again but you can see how that didn't take away from my design at all with the circles um, it just kind of made that little weird corner go away and then you know you could just line these up in a row with each other and let's try one thing too I think it's going to be too weird but the other thing you could do is let's rotate it 90 degrees and then center them let's see select all center now that's a really pretty interesting design it made some little weird things here though that are going to be you know have to be cut out and they're going to be so small by the time you, you shrink this uh, that you would probably want to patch some of those or you know do something here that's not so that has such tiny little holes because they're not going to really they're not going to really do anything you can actually make them bigger we could go to select all combine unite and then I could um, maybe take a circle or some shape a triangle or a diamond here let's do that let's go and find a diamond and make it smaller and let's angle it 45 and see how I need it a little bigger okay now that looks pretty good so what I can do is I can I'm going to show you just with one well I, I guess I should do them all so you could see it at once I would go ahead and duplicate that and I'm going to flip it horizontally because I want to put it over here and I want to take both of those and align them to the bottom so that they're even and then kind of move them together while they're together into a spot I like and then I think I want to attach these to each other and I'm going to duplicate that and then I'm going to flip it vertically and now I have them here for the bottom I'm going to do these two and I'm going to say align center horizontally I think they look pretty good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all combine subtract and now it made those holes so that is better balanced they could be a tiny bit smaller but I needed to cover up all that design that was there this way it by the time I make this the size I want those holes are better related to the rest of the stencil the other issue I can see is see I have these little things here these little holes that didn't overlap and all of these so same thing these I probably would want to patch those and then I do have like these little no notches that are weird if you could see those those I might not be bothered about I could try to uh, get rid of those you know by using my little square that I call my eraser and just chopping those off but those aren't as big a deal I'm not going to worry about those as much the other thing I could have done is maybe moved my design out a little bit so let's see I should have duplicated this before I did that extra step maybe let me see if I can do that I'm backing with my back arrow and I've been moving my thing around so it's really not doing too much here but what I want to get to is before I subtracted okay let's go select this and I'm going to combine undo subtract and I'm going to go to the just my shape 
and I'm going to duplicate that because I want to play with it. And then I'm going to select, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select these pieces and do my subtract. There, and I'm going to make this smaller just to get it out of my way. And let's play with this one a little bit more and see if we could do something a little bit different. Uh, let's go ahead and undo Unite. And actually, let's see. Undo Unite and undo Unite. So now I have my four pieces aren't attached to each other. Oop, they still are. I forgot I had these circles. Let's get rid of those. Okay, hopefully you saw what I just did. I had forgotten that I had added those little circles, so I need to undo Unite this and undo Unite this. So the moral of the story is maybe copy, you know, this simple shape before you start making it more complicated. So I'm just pulling these apart from each other for right now. And... I want to align these center horizontally so they're the same. And then I'm going to move this one maybe there. And I can kind of adjust them all, I guess is my thing. So this way I can manually kind of adjust so that I, I can position this where I want without any little weird spots. So, so I'm going to do these two align center vertically. And these two I want to center horizontally. And then just with your little arrows is kind of the easiest way. Um, I'm going to have to recenter them, but I'm looking around for any little weird spots to see if I even like this. I mean, that is kind of an option. You'll see it, it does have a little weird thing here, um, which I can fix, or, you know, if it's a big enough notch, maybe it doesn't matter. Let's see if I go to there. I'm going to center these again. Align, center, horizontally, center vertically. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that, you see that is kind of similar to this design, but I just lined it up a little bit differently. And combine, unite. So now I have less little weird spots. I have just these, and I can patch those easily. So that's kind of another nice option. So let's make this smaller. We're just gonna line all these different things up. So that made another little bit similar but different. And then let's do our S again. Move it up here. Make it blue so I can, and then. Okay, let's see, let's maybe hide these two. and do something else. So those were connected in one direction. Let's try the other direction. Let's duplicate, flip it vertically, and put them big ends together. And I'm just gonna play with these for a second here. Instead of having them all connected. No, I think I want this to go the other way. Let's see. Flip. That's kind of different.
don't know that I love that. Okay. So let's see. Let's go back to zero. And what I did on one of the other ones, and I liked, I did like this, is I interlocked them this way. That's kind of pretty. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, so I'm going to align these center horizontally and I'm going to combine unite and then I'm going to duplicate that and you could just do these in a row lined up would be pretty but I always like flipping them oh that's a pretty design I don't know if that's one of the ones I already have hidden No, that's different. Okay, so let's do this one. I just want to make sure I'm aligned again. Let's see. Center vertically. Combine. Unite. And then duplicate that. Combine. Unite. That would be pretty. I kind of like that and it's a much finer you know this pattern has a nice um, this almost makes it look like a flower or circle in this square but it just has that you know old world tile look to me which I've been really drawn to right now I'm working on a some Moroccan inspired you could do maybe a paper pack at some point or even stencils I don't know I've just been playing around with some uh, inspirational photos that I have taken on a trip and they all kind of have that certain feel to them. So these actually I can, I'm going to detach these under Unite so that I could uh, make sure they're evenly spaced. So I'm getting close to my 8 inches so I think what I would do is go ahead and select these and align, distribute horizontally, and then unite them. So that's a super pretty design. I love that. Okay, so I'm going to click here and make that 8 inches wide. And it's almost 3, so I think I'm going to unlock it and make it 3, just for fun. And then duplicate that. Okay, so you get the idea. That's gonna be a beautiful stencil. So this is one, I'm gonna save this so that I don't, and I'll work on it more later. And then let's just play with something else totally different. Let's find a new canvas. Okay, now if you want to make a mask that's with letters, it, it's the same concept as some of the stencils that we've been doing where everything needs to be connected to each other. So let me see if I can find a font that will work. This might work. Well, let's try this one. I'm not sure if it'll work or not. And let's change what it says might make it easier. So let's pull, let's do dreams. Dream. If you want to create a more of a mask where the the letters are not cut out this one you could actually do either way. You could put the little sticks here like we did, or you could try to connect them. When you have letters that are more cursive or have these tails that you can connect, this one's not gonna work out so great, but we'll play with it anyway, just so you can see. You would do the same thing as go up here to advance, ungroup the letters, and then you would just scoot them over so that they connect. So that doesn't look horrible for that D to go to the R. You know, when you write cursive, when you learn to write cursive, you're connecting everything. So it's that same sort of concept. This is maybe not the best one to do this with, but I think you're getting it. You get the idea. You just scoot them all over so that they connect, move it fast, and then I'll align the bottom. 
So it's just that concept of connecting everything, a line bottom. So that would all be connected and these can fall out and this would fall out. And that's okay because what's what you're left behind is the plastic or cardstock, whatever you're using, of the word dream. So it's like cutting out the letters without having them all fall apart. Cursive, like I said, works really well to do that. Um, let's go ahead and go back and select all and group these together. And then let's go back and see if we can find this one is so depending on the word you know you can connect these lazy the lazy dog so same thing in fact these some of these are already almost connected you would just go to advanced ungroup and then just move them where you want them you know the other thing you can do is you know they can they don't have to be all in a straight line you know, depending on the style, if you're just wanting to be playful and fun, you can kind of just, you know, have them connected even, even like that, you know, in some kind of writing. The other thing, what this reminds me of is when we get into doing a Semic writing where it doesn't, it maybe doesn't really say anything. It just looks like some handwriting. So I'll address this because that's a, actually a good point when we do a Semic writing sort of stencils so that's just to give you an idea you can connect anything any way that you want so let's get rid of these and then the other thing that I wanted to show you let's go here again is I found in my system this this one's bookmarked but this was in my system is these ornaments and that was awesome because each letter makes an ornament and so I can isolate just one ornament and then, or combine them and use them to create some really interesting designs. So I have not played around with this yet, but what I did do is, let me get rid of those. In my stuff, I went ahead and typed them all out, all the letters, so that I would have a reference for them. So this is the alphabet in capitals. What I found was A, B, they were the mirror of each. So that's kind of a waste because we could have duplicated and done that ourselves. But so this is A, B, C, D, E, F. And over here you can kind of see the symbol and the letter. So I'm gonna create myself some kind of legend or something so that I know which letter is which and I can, I can just create it whenever I want. And then this was the um, the not capital letters, the small letters, they each had a different uh, symbol. So this will be fun because these were all just in, and they all, you know, looking at them, they can all be used as stencil kind of things. So that was another fun thing, a surprise that I found out in my text. And then let's get out of that. We'll replace that and again go back and look at the fonts and there are some other ones I haven't played too much but I really kind of like you know these old world letters because they're more ornate and they don't some of them like you know this O doesn't really look like an O at all you can really kind of manipulate and play with those the other thing that I had done we're getting late on this video so maybe I'll do it in another one was uh, using the slice tool taking a really ornate letter, using the slice tool and using only parts of it. And I I have one, let's see, in my stuff that I was, that's this one. I sliced this, I sliced an A that was ornate and ended up creating this stencil. I haven't cut this one yet and I don't know that I will. It has some really skinny lines on it. But it was just kind of fun to play with. You never know what you're gonna get. So let me go let me go back to my canvas. This back arrow will take you back to whatever canvas you were on. And I want to go back to fonts here because this is another one that I thought was interesting. This curvy font. So even though in the when you looked at it, you didn't you didn't really see the letters, but they're just kind of interesting, you know, and, and I think they would be fun to kind of play around with. So even if I were to like, let's see, let's just get rid of these two and then ungroup these, you know, and just, you just start duplicating them and, you know, changing the direction of them 
and let's see, flip that the other way. And sometimes you find a way you want to connect them, you know, together this way to create something. I really liked this particular font. Um, again, I'm going to be using Procreate later on to do some Asemic writing. And I've already been asked, you know, about certain stencils that I've made. This would be a way without Procreate to do some of that kind of like Japanese character looking writing, even though this is not Japanese, just to try to kind of, you know, make something that has that look because it has the swoop to the, the way that the letters are done. So, you know, you just start playing around and you can, you know, just something like this and just moving them where you want and, you know, connecting these to attach these. You don't even have to, you know, unite them yet, um, you know, and then just really duplicating and flipping things. You just get just some really interesting shapes that you can start building on, you know, Combine these two and let's see, align like that. Well, maybe I should attach these at least, you know, and then maybe you make this the same height as that. Oops. Maybe if I do this, let me do this four by unlock it. Four by six and lock that back. And then we can make this one six by. Now, see what that did? Because this is really four letters, this one just trying to make it bigger is too thick. So I don't like that. So let's make it small again. more relative to this size. And then duplicate it. And let's flip this one. And overlap those. And I don't like that as much. I need to flip this the other way. Let's see, flip horizontally. That's more interesting. And combine those two. Let's align them, center them horizontally. And attach those. And then, you know, you maybe you want to attach them to each other. Or just put them in a row. Or, you know, do a separate design, one with this and one with the other thing. Let's see what these look like. Detached. Oh, I like that better. Make like a little heart kind of thing. That's cute. So we can do those align center horizontally. Nope, they were better when they were offset. But when you unite these and create your new design, they'll have a new center. You know, they'll be all attached. So let's unite those. And you can do things where you, you know, let's do this. Let's let's undo unite. We're going to copy this first. And we're going to unite this one. Okay. And then we're going to copy oops. Duplicate this one. Command D. And this one, let's slice see what we ended up with. Those are interesting X's. So these I may not want or I may want. I don't know. Let's see. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Now I think I'm not going to use these. And if you liked one of these shapes, remember, you know, you could, you could cut them apart by using that uh, the subtract tool duplicating them and using the subtract tool and actually that would be I'm going to do that and I'm getting a lot of things on my plate here but I kind of like this I'm going to 
get rid of one of them just because it's in my way. And I'm going to take my square, my handy dandy scissors. Now, I should have left the other one because then I could have, and I've done this before, is cut the other half. So I could duplicate this. I'll show you what I mean so that I don't lose all my parts. I could just combine, subtract. Now I just have this part. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the square. But I'm going to cut off the other part. And that way I have both of those, but they're not attached to each other anymore. Combine, subtract. So now I have all these parts and pieces. This one I'm already thinking would be really cute to rotate 90 degrees. Now I'm going to need to connect them, but we'll do that in a second. Duplicate. And flip vertically. And duplicate. Flip vertically and flip horizontally. Just to get everything going the direction that I want it to go. That's interesting. That's really cute. I kind of like it. And get this out of my way. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take this one and this one. I don't think, let me see if I align. Yeah, see, it's not going to do what I want. I want them all lined up by their little center. And that, because of the a weird shape, I'm going to just have to put it on a line and eyeball it. So I'm lining it up to the 5-inch line, I think. But I don't want that there. I need a space because I'm going to add a circle or something for the center. So I'm just finding a line. Now I can't. No, I can't. Okay. So I'm just kind of picking a spot on my graph where I can line everything up, some sort of mark that makes sense to me. So it might not be perfect, but I think it's going to be close enough. So those aren't attached, so they would not work, but I can attach them by giving myself a circle. And now they'll all be attached to each other. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm going to combine, unite. And that made an interesting shape. And I can, you know, say, do what I did on the other ones where I take a screenshot of that in case I want to use it in my flower thing that I'm building um, and kind of do that. But, you know, to duplicate them and have them kind of connect to each other, it's going to create this other little interesting shape in between. I'm going to put four of them together and see if I can do that. Let's see. Uh, center vertically. Attach, duplicate. Sometimes if you put, you know, four things together, you'll see kind of what your shape is going to end up creating. So let's see. Let's do these two. Align center horizontally. So see, it has all these little curvy thingies, which is kind of cute, too. So it's just different. I mean, there you can come up with some really strange-looking stencils, I'm sure. But I would really kind of move that one down, I think. But that's kind of interesting, too. Anyway, you see how this can just become a rabbit hole. So that was my exciting video that I wanted to share. Uh, I can spend hours and hours and hours doing this um, and just coming up with all kinds of fun designs. And so I hope that you will, too. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please, if I was unclear about anything, leave a question in the comments. And I look forward to the next video where I, I don't know where we're heading, but I'm just going through my binder of stencils that I had made and kind of expanding on that. So um, this was my, my secret. 
about using text and letters to come up with some interesting shapes. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.